Hello there. Sorry from 17 once again. This is my Bloodborne No Healing walkthrough, and in this video we're going to be killing Eileen the Crow. I did originally intend for this to be the Bloody Crow of Kanehurst battle, because he's the probably the hardest NPC in the game, but I messed up the side quest. So this will be Eileen instead, and it's still a pretty challenging fight, but it's nowhere near as dangerous as that guy if you've ever fought him. So Eileen is, is a tricky mofo in this game, and I haven't beat her that many times, so this is going to be me just kind of dueling with her, and uh, it's not easy, as, as I reiterate, because she has a really good use of, a really good knowledge of when to use the gun against humans. And, I mean, look at it. There are times when my reflexes are on where I can dodge the gun pretty effectively, but there are times when they are not. And, uh, it, you know, getting hit with the gun in this game is really damaging from these later game NPCs as she puts on a lot of pressure here with the Blades of Mercy. The only good thing about this is that she does do pretty predictable transformation co combos, which you can counter with the gun. The bad news is she's incredibly good at counter-dodging you. And if you're not too sure what I mean by this, when you dodge, she dodges at the same time a lot of the time, and she will dodge into where you are and counter-attack you. And I don't know if it's the computer reading inputs, I don't know if it's just the computer being a beast, I'm not entirely sure what it is, but there are moments where this character will essentially rush you down, and it can be very intimidating and very challenging. The best strategy I found, outside of wasting bullets as you can see here, was to wait for her to do the, the knife toss. You see that? When you're at about mid-distance, she chucks a knife at you, and it's an animation that cannot seemingly be cancelled, so you can use that as an opportunity to, ru to rush in and get a quick hit. I think I'm going to start punishing it towards the end of this fight, but at the moment, for all intents and purposes, it's probably the first time I'd ever really fought this creature, because I don't generally mess with this side quest too much, mainly because on the builds that I do use in this game, I already have the rune that gives you the stamina, so it's not really something I ever come back and do, but for the point of the walkthrough, I thought it'd be nice to, to have something like this in, and I'm just not doing a very good job at the moment, mainly because I don't know the pattern, and the best thing in these games is learning the patterns. Oh, she's talking. The beast cannot be stopped. Um, I don't... I don't know, love. You seem a little... It's funny, isn't it? Because she's meant to be the one who hunts. The hunters that go bad, corrupted by the blood. But is she not corrupted by the blood because she's fucking nuts? Like, what did we do wrong? That's one of the things that I never really understood in this game. And there's probably several th theories as to why people think it happened. But for me, I don't think the game gave it any real justification. You know, you ignored talking to her. Does that offend her so much she wants to kill you? Like... I think a cooler mechanic would have been if you used a certain amount of blood gem, uh, blood vials, then she gradually became more contemptful towards you. Because it reminds me of a mechanic in the Nintendo 64 Castlevania, where there was a shopkeeper known as Ronin, and if you spent too much gold with him, he would actually become a boss, and a pretty tricky boss as well, if you've never fought him before. And I always thought that was a great risk versus reward aspect of that game. Did you play the game and use the shop only when you barely needed to? Or did you haul the shop out and farm for, for gold and stuff and just abuse the shop? If you did so, you got punished. And I always thought that this would have been cooler if the more blood vials you used, the, the more this lady began to resent you and eventually hunt you. I thought that could have been a really cool mechanic. And it just kind of didn't go that way, did it? It's if you ignore her quest line, in the end she ends up hunting you because she believes that you've gone bad and I, I don't know guys do you feel like you went bad in this game? I mean there are certain playthroughs where I certainly went full like like scourge but in others I thought I was a pretty nice dude 